people like a lot of artists when they start they're like i want to play in small towns because they think the small town people don't ever experience art or something it's like those (laughs) those crowds those crowds are way harder to please man like they're they 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 don't have time for bs they're like if if you're not ready to be honest with them and, and put on a good show they're just like they'll talk through your whole show no problem but yeah they're also equally ready to like let you do your job if you're good welcome to muttering pines the show where us city folk try to cowpoke we drink beer talk about etvs life outside the city homesteading entrepreneurship and ultimately trying to do stuff with our hands this is our first episode back since we went on our spring trip this episode isn't about the spring trip that's coming up but yeah no this is our first one back because we survived and Matt's being real weird close to the no, camera. I'm just trying to get intimate with my camera. Oh. It's still fuzzy. Uh, yeah. That was a great trip. It was a great trip. I had a good time. We listened to a lot of good music on that trip. And we went to Montana. We did go to Montana. To Montana, well, not into well, Montana. We went to Montana. Not, my elbow went into Montana. Oh, that's right. Yeah. How many? Uh, yeah. And was shot off by a how, drone. Show him, many... show him your wound, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dronage did we see? No dronage. I almost no. fucking got killed by my quad twice. Yeah, well, you're an idiot, so that's not your quad's issue. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, we did listen to a lot of music, and we have a musical person again tonight. Uh, mm-hmm. we have a, a bloke out of Manitoba who's done bloke. some uh, a bloke a bloke <laughs> how do they how do they, they use the word bloke in Manitoba no, I'm they, not sure they do at all a yeah. chap a fellow mm, a fella I could see a fella yeah fella. we got a fella out of Manitoba fella. who's uh, go. toured with Colt Wall and Corb London He's got his, I think his fifth or sixth studio album out and uh, seems like a pretty, pretty sweet guy. He's got a farm, yep. chickens and family. cows and grain, and he's into hunting and fishing. So uh, we're talking with Del Barber yeah. tonight. Let, let's just, pa- just before we get him in here, let's just, let's just add all that up. So he has a farm. Yes. He looks after chickens. Yes. He's made six studio albums. Yes. He's a father of two. Yeah. He has time for all of that somehow. Mm-hmm. And he's coming on our show right now. And mm-hmm. us. I don't have most of those things, and I don't have time for <laughs> Yeah. Barely have time <laughs> all right, to do well, this. I'm, I'm busy Let's thinking about myself. Visit. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's not keep him waiting. And... Uh, Let's dive right in. Um, all right. Del Barber, how are you doing? Doing great. Yeah, absolutely. Happy Look to at you. Here. You're all farmered up. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I literally just uh, just came into my little studio from, uh, from the yard here. Just fed my chickens. Did a little bit of weeding uh, in the asparagus patch. Now I'm here to have a beer with you guys. Oh, awesome. Well, let's... Let's start off by talking about that beer. What are you drinking? Tonight, I am drinking a fancy beer. I would consider a hipster beer. So this is, it's got a nice wolf on the front of it. See that? Oh, I like, I like that. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's an IPA. And it's, uh, I, and I love IPAs, but um, I only really drink them when I'm at home. They're a bit of a liability when you're on the road, you know? Yes. Right. So I haven't had them in a while. I when I'm when I'm touring, I drink like uh, light beers or lagers or like Czech pilsners or something. If it, if it's at a microbrewery, and I can drink something safe that won't wreck yep. my guts. But when I'm home, I can drink a high test IPA and not be too worried about it. What yeah, do you, you guys, don't want to have. What do you guys drink? Those, right? Yeah, um, I am keeping it cheap and local. Nice. With- Bronk. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, you're, you're talking bottom of the barrel, cheap, it, cheap. That's usually Buck what I can. That's Buck a can. can brog. That is the best right there. That's that's the way to drink beer. Yeah. Right, if you I'm, drink I'm it way in off program, I tonight I'm having Stewart's cream soda. Oh wow! Cream soda. Yeah, which I'm pairing with drugs. So nice. Good so for you. Right. Yeah. Previously yeah. enjoyed. Yeah. I'm going to. Sure. Uh, I'm going to go hard test. Nice. Go straight rum. Just oh, straight rum. This, this is the last. Oh, we're this is hear a real Matt. surprise. Yeah. This is this yeah. is going to be some episode. Nice, I've uh, I've had a heck of a day, so this is going to be good. So. <laughs> Love that. All right, Del, Del, you said you're in the yard. Now, are you're in Inglis, Manitoba, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay, that's um, right on the Saskatchewan and Manitoba border. Yes, I'm impressed. Okay. All right, so wow. you, you and I have common ground. I have a lot of farmy, uh, farmy. I, I have farmily. That is actually true. Farmer They're all that. farmers. Uh, uh-huh. Family in Killarney, Manitoba. Wow. Um, so okay. a whole bunch there, and then I have a bunch in Toulon, and I myself used to live in Selkirk, so just just outside of Winnipeg. Yeah, so I live about like straight from Killarney. Let's see, probably three hours due north. Oh, straight north of Killarney. Well, yeah. okay, pretty close because Killarney's sort of yeah. west uh, of the big mm-hmm. city. Yeah, so that's uh, yeah, this is where we call home, English Manitoba, the Parkland of Manitoba. They call it. Where's everybody else from? We're all, We're all here. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, mm-hmm. Dealing with, um, little dealing shacks with a lot of in smoke. the city. Yeah. Yeah. It, it hasn't been bad here, luckily. Uh, but I, I don't know if you know um, about the, the homesteads that, that Darren and I have, but those are about 60 kilometers from those fires um, outside of Drayton. Yeah. So, a- yeah, they're, they're pretty close. But they haven't really blown in our way yet. We've, we've been lucky so far. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully that is the that is the case here. Are you um, having unusually warm weather like we are? Uh, not really. Um, I'm gonna say sort, Manitoba is probably unusually cold right now, isn't it? It's today actually. It's it's been like seasonal, and I would say slightly warm. We had a kind of a system move in, and we got some precip, which we haven't really had. Uh, and then, uh, and then it kind of warmed up. Um, but we haven't seen, it hasn't been, there's been no frost at night and usually throughout most of May, it's like, like we tap our box elder trees here and we can keep taps in up until the first week of May, but it hasn't frozen in a while. Hmm. So wait, we're actually wait. elder taps to box make sure. elders, Manitoba maples, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Oh, I- I'm ignorant to it, so I no, no, no. Yeah, they're great. They're uh, they'll that... actually flow that late into the year. Yeah, um, for sure into May. It, it, as long as it keeps freezing every night, it that they, they flow. It doesn't. It doesn't care how late it is. It just cares about freeze thaw. Wow. So, huh. um, and does that give you actual like syrup? Oh yeah. Yeah, really? really, really great maple syrup. I would say it is as good as silver leaves or, or sugar maples. It just tastes slightly different. It tastes a little more like butterscotch. Oh, yeah, I now it, it, it depends on. Great. Yeah, it's awesome. Depends on your stand of trees. Um, but sometimes some years they'll actually run as sweet as like your sugar maples, which is like 30 to one. Wow. Um, so do you have to do anything with that or is it just like you just right out of the tree and it's good to go? No, you got to cook it. It's like I said, it's just 30 to one, just like any maple tree. Yeah. You got to, you got to disappear most of the water and you do that by cooking it forever, drinking beer and sitting around, yeah. sitting around wood stoves with giant stainless steel trays on them. And that's fun. It's like usually the spring activity I look forward to the most, but since I've been gone, I haven't really been participating in it. So, I just so, yeah, so that, said, that's the thing I'm missing from my life. I didn't know I was supposed to cook maple syrup because that is all the things I want to do forever. Yeah, it's awesome. Drink, <laughs> drink beer and cook maple syrup. Yeah, and you like yeah, you, just. Yeah, it's also like a great time to share, you know, your last year's sausage with your neighbors, and you know, hang out with 
with your neighbors and do it. It's like a concerted effort. It takes a lot of people to keep that fire moving and, uh, and I love it. And it's, it's not really something that happens in Western Canada much. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. no. but I, I, I didn't even know we had maple trees out yeah. past Ontario. Yeah. You got yeah, me. You got, I've ever heard of it. There's definitely tappable trees in Alberta and I know people that do it, but it's not common. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's really, they're not as good and there's not as many trees and like it takes some doing, but we have a big stand of box elders on one of the farms I hunt and, uh, my father-in-law owns that land. And so we just tap them to our heart's content. It's good. It's a good way to celebrate spring for sure. No kidding. So, Dell, you said, uh, that, um, you drink different beer when you're away and, uh, you're just getting back to having an IPA right now. So have you been on tour? Yeah. I just got back from uh, 30 shows. So what? Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, six weeks, almost 18,000 kilometers driven. Uh, drove from Inglis to Winnipeg, then straight to Vancouver, and then straight across to Halifax, and then back here. So Holy shit. Winnipeg to Vancouver in a straight shot. Well, with shows along the way. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So 30 shows over six weeks, 18,000 clicks. It's like, oh my God. you will wow. experience, you will experience how large Canada is. It is just a behemoth of a country and it's like impossibly, <laughs> impossibly large, you know? Huh. Uh, and that was to promote your new album, Almanac. That's correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you, um, Okay, so Almanac is your fifth or sixth studio album? Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I would say six. Prolific people. Oh. I mean, there's a few other ones in sixth. there that I don't yeah, okay. count. But yeah. Yeah, six six records officially that I would consider a released, yeah. Good for you. That's awesome. One thing I noticed with it, uh, and you know, with following you on Instagram and all that and looking at the merch you've got, you've got like this, a bit of a different style to the album cover than some of your previous albums. And then like your merch with like your, you know, Del Barber on the canoe and everything. Like it's very in line with the Almanac cover. So I guess my two questions are, one, I think it's fucking sweet. And, uh, I want to know who did your art and two, um, is that kind of going to be like, uh, I guess like a brand trajectory for you is to follow that style. Well, yeah, I'm trying to figure out like most people that have whatever, if you want to call it a brand, you guys have a brand. It's, it's a weird, it's kind of a word that stings when it's something that you love, you're doing it because you love it, but it still sort of stings. I'm trying to make it fall in line with like the things that I love without being kitschy and, Mm -hmm. and it's hard to do. Like it's really easy to just copy what's popular, but it's harder to sort of find that niche and especially like aesthetically to get it right. And I don't know that I have it right, but that's just an attempt to try and like show who I'm about what I want to talk mm-hmm. about and what matters to me and, and like where I, where I get fueled, you know, like for me, it's like being outside and totally forever. Like the main logo I had was like, a. uh, I thought I was the first one to ever make this up. And that's the other part of this thing is like, you, you get these ideas and you're like, that's what I want to do. So I had like, I had a guy or like a guy riding a trout, right? It was like a road, like, oh, on, yeah. like, like a bear, like a bronc rider, but on a trout. And that's like, I made this up. And then, um, that was like every hat I sold, I sold like a thousand of those hats. Every outdoors guy that came to my show or outdoors woman that came to my shows bought that thing. And I was like, okay, people that come to my shows get what I'm trying to talk about. Mm-hmm. And like, there's nuance there and they're, they're into it. And then 
last year I see Sims puts out, you know, guys know Sims, right? The, yeah. The famous waiter makers and from Bozeman or whatever. Yeah. They put out a t-shirt with a bronc rider on a shirt, or like a, a guy riding a, like a cowboy riding a trout. Right? Oh, I'm fuck. Like, I'm like, you stole my idea. And so immediately I Google, I Google this like concept, like cowboy on trout. And then it, it's like pre- predates my idea, like by like 10 years, you know? <laughs> and, I, and, and meanwhile, I had like 10 of my fans who were like fish bios and, and like hardcore outdoorsmen sponsored dudes email Sims and be like, Hey, you stole this idea from Dell. And meanwhile, they're like, uh, no, we did not. We stole it from, X X X like I was like okay right, I clearly from something 15 years ago yeah yeah I, I clearly <laughs> saw this somewhere I was like traveling through Wyoming or who knows where fishing and I probably saw it and it entered into my psyche and then so this whole new brand is like trying to like work with artists and not not give them a specific thing to talk about right or or draw about or whatever you know and to try and get them to like be as creative as possible. I'm not like that great at visualization. And so like I try to get, try to like describe the things that I love and try to like highlight certain parts of songs and like images for them to tap into. Yeah. yeah. And then, hmm. and so the artist that I've been working with has been living out in Alberta. She's, she's actually from North of Edmonton, but she's a, an amazing painter she paints like western stuff lots of outdoor stuff and she's she's moving to saskatchewan thank god you know thank god she's moving east um there's too many great artists in alberta so we're just trying to like suck <laughs> some of them east <laughs> and uh and uh yeah so uh yeah her name's her name's kendall she married a Keenahan, so now she's Kendall Keenahan, but uh, she's an incredible visual artist. I would encourage anybody to go check her out to try. And, hmm. um, she's like equally great as a painter, at, 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 as much as she is a graphic designer. She's like good at both things. So huh. you that's awesome. Out. You should hire her if you get a chance to. She's incredible. Yeah, we might. Yeah, um, she's into all the same stuff. Like her, her, her brother's like a guide, uh, Northern Alberta, and. And, uh, you know, they, they all, they come from people who, who hunt and, and mm-hmm. angle and who are into like, you know, cowboy shit. And I, I don't know, <laughs> I'm a big fan of people who aren't just like pretending to get what I do. They're like, actually, they actually believe in it. And so yeah. I don't know. It's nice to work with her. Huh. Um, all right. one of the, the agency I work for, we're doing, uh, we're doing stuff for, uh, I don't know if you know the brand cowboy shit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we're doing stuff for them. And I know like our, our designers are sometimes struggle with trying to find things that aren't already taken. Right. Totally. Especially when you're out doing outdoors and, and, and cowboy kind of it's stuff. Hard. It's like, yeah, you have this thing. You're like, yeah, it's sweet. And then someone's like, well, that looks like this. And you're like, fuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yep. I know that but I once well. told the entire Jim Gaffigan hot pocket bit as if it was my own, not realizing that it was a Jim Gaffigan bit that I definitely had heard before. Sure. But I, at, at, in the moment, I had no idea what it was. My friend Andrew Lavery looked at me and was like, that's a Jim Gaffigan <laughs> joke. Nice. And I was like, what? And then I realized later what I had done. So, yeah, I, I can understand that feeling. So do you find that kind of thing – when you're writing your music too, big time. And you're like, oh, I've done this, and then you, you like start looking up parts of your song, and you're like, oh crap. Oh I yeah, <laughs> you rip off yourself all the time. That's fine. Oh, that's easy. That's like really easy to figure out if if you're willing to to like. Because I'm, I mean, in like, if you when I'm when my back's up against the wall, I feel like I'm just writing the same song over and over. Um, like, I don't, I feel like I'm just trying to find a new way to say the same thing. And, hmm. yeah. and I know exactly what that is and I'm obsessed with it. And that's why I keep writing songs. But the problem is when you write a song, you're like, fuck, this sounds great. This, 
this is it. And then you're like, oh, it's free fallen by Tom Petty or, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you like, you back up into this like hit and you're like, oh man, this sounds universal. Everyone's going to like this. And then you're like, That's, because they do. Yeah. Because they do. And because you didn't write it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. how do you, how do you back check yourself against a, uh, you know, a hundred years or 150 years worth of music where you may have picked up uh, a nuance from, from somebody, but you don't want to be uh, charged with copywriting or, or accused of, of stealing an idea. Like what is, you can't know all that music off the top of your head. How, what's the industry do to back you up for this? Well, yeah, it's a great question. I don't like, obviously I'm not writing songs at the scale of like, hits so it probably doesn't matter um but the people that buy my music want originality so you hear it from them when the influence is too great you know what i mean when hmm. it's when like it's they'll, too they'll rich tell you such and such it sound you sound too much like this or what do you mean it's sometimes they do it complimentary like this really reminds me of this song Oh, okay. Um, and that's fine. But like, I have a pretty big group of, I would call them experts. They're just like my community that I vet all my songs for. I, okay. and, and anytime anyone sends me a song, like we, we all send each other our work before it gets published or even go, gone to the studio. What do you, what do you think of this song? Even if it's just an idea, it's like, this is what this song is about. This character for me, I want, I want to write about, I want to write about, uh, like I'd like to, like right now I'm thinking about how do I write about a, a, an old woman who hunts, who doesn't hunt with her husband. Uh, she just loves hunting for whatever reason. How do I write about that character? Okay. So then I will just like, I will obsess about, try to watch uh, people in my life who embody that uh, sense, that, that worldview. You know, there are a few people around and it's just because, because that, that woman is an exception, unfortunately. Um, they're, they're out there. Mm -hmm. but they're not, they're not as common as like the old dude who hunts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel um, like you could just channel some Aerosmith for that one, right? Yeah. Granny's got a gun. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's <good. laughs> and I've I'm been trying, like, on it. I try to write about those characters. Cause I, I'm like, I think they're the most interesting and also like, uh, I'm not afraid of the comedic side of it either. I think it's great. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Like, well, and that's the originality that you said that uh, people are looking for too, right? Like, I, I don't think you could you could probably spend a lot of time researching other songs about uh, elderly women who hunt and probably come up fairly empty-handed. Zero. Yeah. Like, maybe there's something. But, like... There has to be there has to be characters and stories that haven't been told, especially like from the like because I'm I'm obsessed with like connecting people to place, connecting mm -hmm. like like sep like creating like less of a gap between urban and rural life. Like that's yeah. what I that's what my that's what the song I keep writing about. You know, I mentioned earlier. It's like that right. that's that's the thing I will always think is the most important because I so like. What drives that feeling with you, that desire to connect urban to rural? I mean, I think it's, I think it's the thing that uh, has created the polarization, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm a person who lives firmly in both worlds. Like I tour and I play New York City and I play Calgary and I play uh all of the major city centers. And then I end up and I end up playing a bunch of weird shows and legions all over the, all over the country that in small towns, but I end up spending my time, uh, in the outdoors and at home around rural people. Those legions are, are kind of the best. Hey, 
for me, it, it's the best place to play music. I, there's yeah. no riffraff. There's no pretense. Th- there's no shiny lights. It's like everything is just like completely exposed. And yeah, it's real. It's intimate. Yeah. yeah. And, and people like a lot of artists, when they start, they're like, I want to play in small towns because they think the s- small town people don't ever experience art or something. And it's like those, <laughs> those crowds, those yeah. crowds are way harder to please, man. Like they're, they, they, they don't have time for BS. They're like, if, if you're not ready to be honest with them and, and put on a good show, they're just like, they'll talk through your whole show. No problem. But yeah. they're also equally ready to like, let you do your job if you're good. So do you, you know, like I know co- uh, comedians will, will test new material as they tour and then they'll put out their special or whatever. So when you're on tour and we're, when you're doing shows, are you kind of testing new songs too, to kind of see, you know, like, is this going to go on the record or am I going to get, you know, toilet paper thrown at me or whatever? Beer yeah. cans? This is the first record where I didn't test anything. Every single, every song I've ever written, every single song I've written, I have tested it for years before I recorded it. And this was how fucking scary was that to release then? Super scary. But at at some (laughs) point, at some point, if you don't have the confidence to do it, you're like, okay, well, I've been testing songs forever and I know what works. How could I not have a group of songs that I know will work now at this point? Like, Mm -hmm. also, do you want to go watch somebody who's not confident in their new material? Like, right. No. Like oftentimes new material comes across as something that's like, well, maybe, maybe I could do something new. And people are like, I guess, instead of like guns blazing, this yeah. is the best, this is the best thing I've ever done. Like play it like it's the best thing you've ever done. Have a band that's like completely ready to play it like that. I don't know. These, these shows we just did were, were that like everybody could get down with, they wanted to hear old stuff too. Like there's records yeah. from 2011 that I have fans, especially like in the Maritimes in Canada, they, they want to hear songs I haven't played in 10 years. Like I haven't right. personally played them because I didn't think they were good. And they come to the shows and they, every time they come, they yell. And I'm like, sorry, man, I wrote 10 verses to that song. And there's way too many words for anyone to memor like to have it memorized. Like I was a 25 year old, like uh, egomaniac. You know what happens when you're 25? You think you're hot shit. Like I'm not playing that mm-hmm. for you. And and I'm not. It's not like I'm not playing it because I don't. I I don't think it's bad. I just am just like unable to to know it. It's like not really in my wheelhouse. And and. Uh, and so you play other songs and they hope you hope that they get into them. And if they don't, you just lose those fans and that's all right. It's like, hmm. it's like any brand, Crazy. any brand or farm yeah. or whatever. You're like, you're trying to sell beef to people. And sometimes people say, I'm tired of eating ground beef. I'm going to eat <laughs> tuna. Tuna's on sale right now. I really like rare tuna. It's like, all right. Interesting. Just these- the you assumption, yeah, what your audience is after. So this is this is we talked to uh, uh, the Davison brothers a, a few weeks back, all right, and they're they're very connected to their to their audience. When they uh-huh. make music, it's like a public affair for them. And so would you say that's your experience too? Because it sounds like it. It sounds like there's yeah. you know a, like a lot of you and and other people playing together before things get moving. Well. I think when I am writing songs, I want them to be, yeah, I think it's all about, actually, I take it back. I think you're right. I think I don't write songs for myself. Not I don't need to write to feel good. I'm not interested in like art as the expression for me to cope with some bullshit. That's not me. <laughs> I want I want to tell Love good it. stories for people. I want I want them to be like, dude, I I empathize with that. I don't write about myself. Like I don't the world has heard a lot <laughs> I said this too many times, but I believe it one hundred percent. The world's heard a lot of whiny 
white dudes complaining about their lives. Mm-hmm. That is not who I am. And that's not what I'm trying to, trying to propagate in this world. I want to, I want to, I write songs to empathize with people like the old woman hunter. Okay. As an idea mm-hmm. song, a song I'm trying to work on right now. I don't know what it's going to look like, but it's, I'm writing it. Uh, and I, and I want to make her seem like the most badass, most knowledgeable outdoors person. And I want to romanticize her. I want to, I want to, I want, I want to picture her walking to a, to a, imagine a 70 year old woman like in a tree saddle with a bow, you know, I just, Mm -hmm. I would love to be able to write that story and, and talk about the perspective she has when she, when she takes something's life, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was making me, uh, this is making me think of, uh, something that happened with Darren and I a few years ago when we were on a hunt in, in British Columbia in barrier in BC, uh, there was uh, an old woman that lived near the place that we were hunting. And the only meat she ate were, was organ meat from, from wild game. And so <laughs> what happened Darren's to the rest brother, of it? <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so we took something nearby. And so Darren's brother, took down a bunch of organ meat to her because that, that was the only meat she really ate because, you know, that's what she grew up on and that's what she liked to cook her whole life. So maybe your woman hunter need, we need to think about like what she's doing at 70 when her teeth are starting to get bad. She's starting to eat organ meat because it's, you know, that's fun. Yeah. The the soft, all the soft stuff. I love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. And there's a few hunters around here that I'm, that I'm trying to like, hang out with their very like uh hard to uh hard to make their acquaintance they're not exactly right. like social butterflies and right. uh, all yeah. all the stories that i write about are these people who are like tough nuts to crack and and huh. and a lot of my songs are about particular people um but usually it comes from me f- having this idea of them and then trying to find them in this world and knowing that they exist and like doing my best to like, to share their history. Like it's, it's sort of like uh, s- historical in some ways. Like we need to know mm-hmm. that these characters exist and we need to know that mm-hmm. like they operate and have a, a sense, a moral compass that is slightly different than ours or, or like, but also very compelling, like, uh, yeah. And you know, well, I'm, your, I, your reviewers, your reviewers give you credit as, as that kind of storyteller. That's how they talk about you when they review your work. And, you know, you get, you get put up alongside a lot of folk music as much as you do country music. You know, totally. Your, your new album sounds a lot like country music, but a lot of your earlier stuff is like real Guthrie. One of your kids' names is Guthrie, for goodness sake. So that's right. You guys did a lot of research here. Very impressed. It's not yeah, very common. We're very stalkery. It's uh, you know, it's hard for some people to manage at first, but you know, you you'll get used to it when you see where Darren put the cameras. It's very tasteful. It's good. <laughs> you guys have been criticizing my dry, <laughs> drywall joints in my studio for the last four weeks. You know who's not you criticizing your drywall? <laughs> Matt. Yeah, Matt looks like Matt. drywall. <laughs> Matt looks like he needs me to come over there. Yeah, you want to come over? I I, I have drywall uh-huh. in my garage right now. I just haven't. Uh, well, st- I've gone around to it. doing anything. So yeah, that well, uh, there. that nice white tail on the wall there is uh, definitely catching my eye. So thanks mm-hmm. for rubbing that right in the face. That is that's that's <laughs> the first buck I ever took with my bow, and it's it's perfectly velvet. Can I go show you guys? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Look at that wood stove pipe. Ah, gorgeous. Can you see how the perfect the velvet is? Good God. That's, That's a... Cool, eh? Wow. It's not like it's not massive, but it's so symmetrical. I was going to say it's say, like... It almost looks fake. 3D I know, printed. It, looks fake. it totally looks fake, and I assure you it's not. I, it... Uh, it was a very big deal for me at the time. 
And of did course, did you do like, the tax derby on it? No, I don't like. So the last, I've shot four velvet bucks in a row, and nice. the one I got, the one I got last fall uh, with my bow, because our archery season opens August 29th. And, mm-hmm. and for my money, not, not that I believe that there's any sort of expert in this game, but the amount I, I, my, so my daughter and I, we scout all through July and, and like maybe the first week of August. And then I get ready to kill something because the amount of opportunities I've gotten in the first three days of the season, it's just like, it beats the amount of time I've hunt when I hunt the rut in Manitoba in November, like Mm -hmm. deer, Mm -hmm. deer just coming out at the time they always come out at. I go and glass them from like across the Valley and, they do the same thing almost every night, unless something changes, unless, the, you know, unless there's some big catastrophic weather change or wind change. And, but are we get pretty consistent winds and they're just going to do the same stuff. They're safe. Hmm. And, uh, and I like my, I only get one buck tag in Manitoba and, and, and the last four seasons I've killed them on opening day every day. Good for you. Really? Oh, wow. Good. Yeah. Good so for this, you. This, uh, this I don't think that this is. In. There's also extreme luck to this, uh, and the, like I caught, I, I aired a bruiser. I wish he was in here. I it's the first like shoulder mount I got made. It was the same year my dad died. I was like, I got to spend the money on this guy. It was one. He's one sixty. He's and he's like a four by six. His like I can't put my. My, thing, my <laughs> fingers around the base of an antlers. He's he's huge, you know, and like he's like huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's the biggest cool. deer I've ever seen. And and I had him on trail camera, and he was his body was so massive that I was like, oh, this this deer, I would shoot this deer, but he's not the one that I want to kill. And then he came out, and I was like, I just about shat my drawers. It was this, the exact same situation, but that first one I shot that I showed you was completely life-changing for me because I had spent four years without pulling my bow back on a whitetail. Really? Hunting, hunting, hunting the pre-rut, hunting all through the rut with my bow. And then I would end up shooting one with my rifle because I was just I was like, I can't get close enough to these stupid things. I can't, I can't figure it out. So, so which, which song is, is that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's always, it's always about trying to, 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 to write, uh, about those massive moments in life, but try, how do I do it without talking about my own? worries because i i don't think people care about me and i don't think they need to care about me and and i also like i get a lot of shit for posting about my life outdoors really like a lot of shit i just had a I just did an interview with peterson outdoors there he's awesome but he was like people like if i post a picture of the deer i shoot i get 10 emails about it oh yeah yeah people people get very upset about about harvesting yes and they don't really have the ears for me to to tell them why i think it's important or yeah i just i alienate them immediately and i don't want to do that there's got like there's if i meet them and we hang out they end up getting it and I end up getting them like, mm-hmm. you know, but flaunting it. Like I just, also, you know how it is with social media. It's like, I'm a passionate angler. I love to fish. I grew up fishing. Fishing is like the thing that I rely on the most for like m- mental stability, whatever. <laughs> and, and I also just, 
I'm tired. I'm tired of looking at Instagram or Facebook and just seeing pictures of fish, and I don't want to be that guy. And, but enough. I also, I also want people to know that I love it. And so, like last year, January first, I said I will not post a picture of a fish, and me. I'm not doing it. I'm gonna take it. I'm. I don't want to get the likes. I. I just want to go. I don't want to have to because I felt like when I was go, I would get so much attention because fishing. No matter who you are, people are okay with it for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you, as soon as you like lift a duck up or or shoot a whitetail, which is just a, basically a giant rabbit with antlers, people are like, <laughs> "Oh my god, why? How could you do such a cruel thing?" So, but at a certain point, you have to decide why you're doing something and if you actually like it or not, or if you're doing it because you want to have a certain. Uh, brand mm. and i need people to see past the fact that, that that i love doing this stuff like i don't get to own it and i don't think mm. my feelings are important and i don't want people that's the other part about the way i write music and the way i think art and culture works is like right now i want i want people to think a little bit less about their feelings personally about situations and then and actually look at like what makes a difference where and for who you know it's not really about us and our own feelings about the thing and like if i were to like criticize my own uh emotional reaction to to harvesting things I don't think I have it right, you know. I don't think that like I'm obsessed with big whitetails. Obsessed. <laughs> I Aren't we all I all? run Yeah. I run a lot of cameras just to try to get glimpses of them. And like I want to shoot a 200-inch deer. It's not going to happen with my bow probably ever, but I'm obsessed. Do I think that obsession is like, just because I feel electric, just because do I think it's like morally right? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't, it's not going to change my behavior mm -hmm. just because I question myself. Why is it so hard to question ourselves? Why, why is it such a big deal to, to not make, you have to assume that the way you're operating is right. It's like, no, man, maybe not. Uh, and, and if someone can convince me to a, to a fact that it's wrong, then I might stop. But going as far as saying it's wrong is that's not it either. It's, it, it's like most of what we do is somewhere in the middle. And mm -hmm. yeah, and I think usually the answer is just not for me. It's, it's not for me, but some people project that outward. Some people yeah. decide that not for me needs to be on exposition. Hey, everybody, I want everybody to know that that is not for me is, is what they're actually doing. Why do I have a hard time shooting does? Why? I'm supposed to shoot them. Why do There's you have too many. Shooting what? Does. Sorry, we lost. Oh, oh does? does? Hey, yeah. I'm kind of with, I'm, I'm. Personally, I'm with you because I have the same thing. Like I, I'm not a trophy. Why? Hunter. Right. I'm not yeah. a trophy hunter, but there's some fucking trophies right there. And I'm with you. I'm like, I'm in it for the meat, but I'm in the back of my head. I'm like, I also want the fucking seven point, like the seven by seven that's walking through the woods. That's the one he's going to taste like shit, but that's the one I want. Like it's a, it's a conflict. And with the does, I'm like, like Matt and I have been out a few times and I've passed up a bunch of does. Matt can tell you it's probably very infuriating because I'm like, I don't know. That one might be a mom. I'm not going to shoot that. And Matt's like, I don't think yes. I'm like, ah, but is that it's baby? Which, which who's baby? You know what? We'll just go to the next herd. And Matt, fuck. <laughs> so <laughs> just shoot and go doe, home. A doe is one in like, you're going to have 25 does to every buck, right? So when you go out shooting for meat, you're going to see one doe and you're like, well, that's it. Cause there's no difference between it 
and the one beside it, with the mm-hmm. exception of Darren's case, where that particular doe might have a nanny at home who needs a to send money home to the Philippines, and you don't <laughs> want to kill it. <laughs> so whatever excuse you have. Uh, but a doe is a doe, and there's no real, like, there's no, not no hunt, but there's no hunt for it. It's as soon as you see a doe, you could, you could take it. Yeah. It's the, the hunt for the prize. It's not necessarily the yeah. trophy, but the prize. I, I feel like that is the thing that hunters are not honest enough about, especially in the modern yeah. day of like meat and using all the animals. It's like hunters have always done that. Like, fuck off. Like totally. this is not a new thing. And totally. I don't know a lot of hunters that go out and shoot the first deer that they see. Unless there it's is like a, antlers. Unless it's a biggie. Well, yeah, no, but like you know your, what I mean. Like bruiser. But like shoulder mount. I. Yeah, I don't. I just. I want. I want there to be new, more nuance in the conversations about everything. And I love the totally. the idea of like that. I want to be honest about the fact that I like chasing elk. I like chasing deer. I like. Yeah. I like the puzzle. Sure. And and I think that there's something valuable in that puzzle. And there's something valuable in suffering for that thing. Like for me, I'm not I'm not mm-hmm. suffering sitting in, in the cold because I'm the last bunch of years I've I've notched my tag in September first or August twenty ninth. Mm-hmm. If the wind's right. But all of July I spend uh, just getting absolutely chewed by black flies and mosquitoes because I'm up at the top of a tree glassing deer and I love the suffering part of it. I love the puzzle and I love putting my eyes on the thing, you know, and I love making a plan and executing the plan and failing. And, uh, I love the, the write up of what you guys do fumbling our way through the outdoors. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> fuck is- in, that's literally, me, literally it. Yeah. But there like no that, just, <laughs> that just yeah. speaks to what it is, though, right? Like, I think that's what people who don't hunt don't understand is like, because they'll say stuff like, oh, well, you know, it's unfair. You've got the rifle, you've got the bow. And it's like, man, it's called hunting. Like, there's, it's not killing. Like, there's not work. Getting. Yeah, it's not like, oh, I walked outside and I literally walked up to this deer and shot it in the head. Like, it was, uh, yeah like yeah. no like i like you said like you've been chewed up by black flies and mosquitoes for a month or you know some years you don't get anything yeah if you're like us you don't get anything ever because we're fucking terrible at it and like that's not it's... true you also like you also live in a different place than i do like if i were to go to let's say minnesota and try to get a deer i would fail like i'd done a mm. I've done a public land hunt for the last five years with in the early archery season where there's more deer density than anywhere else in Manitoba. You can take four deer there now. Really? In Minnesota? I've no in, well, right on the border in Manitoba. I've failed every time. Well, if you want to consider failure, not bringing home meat, but it's like a public land canoe in hunt. It's awesome. It's always like, right. Like there could be ice on the river. It, you know, it's always fringe season. You're camping. It's like, it's a, it's a, it's an adventure. When you canoe sounds in. Fun. Are that you sounds camping? amazing. You're camping over. Yeah. It's How like, many it's days are you in there? Not long That's enough. <laughs> Never <laughs> long enough. Because it sounds, this is sounding excellent. I, I want to know more about this trip immediately. I, yeah. I could it's do... a wicked trip, man. I love the idea of the hunting and I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but I like the idea of the canoe in to a remote area to go camping. And then with the prospect of killing something that sounds, that sounds amazing. And it's just me and one of the only other guys I can hunt with. If we just see the world the same way, we're always just into trying to figure it out. And, and it's like, there's, there's stuff that we don't get to hunt. So like 
oak trees that are dropping acorns. Like you hear about that in the U S all the time. Mm. Well, wow. It seems great until they're the only thing you see are black bears and, and you're just like macing black bears from your tree stand or whatever, you know, like <laughs> it's fine. As soon as you see a black bear and your truck is a two hour canoe ride away, you're like, this is a different thing. And yes, I'm not exactly like black bears and I hate black bears. I'm like, I don't trust them at all. And I'm not, I don't like any time I spend in the back country around black bears. I'm just like, these things are a liability. I can't figure out what they're doing. I don't have like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, I think that they are going to, they're killers and, <laughs> and you do research on black bears and you're like, yeah, there's a percentage of them that are predatory and that want to hunt and kill you. And I've had, let's see, three friends get attacked by black, black bears now. And I'm just like, I, I, when I oh, hunt shit. here, I bring, I bring bear spray with me because people with yeah. guns don't defend themselves against bears. They end up dying. People with mace end up sometimes surviving. And like black bears, like, yeah, they're way small. Like I don't have grizzly bears in Manitoba. Well, that's not true. They they do exist here, but they're very rare. I was Every just going to ask if you guys have grizz. Cause yeah. yeah, that's our that's, number one that, fear. Because there's yeah. no stopping those fucking things. Like they're just no. murder yeah. on wheels. No. And I've, yeah, I like, spent a lot of time. seasoning yourself if you pepper spray one. I've spent a lot of time in Alaska and at least their body language is consistent whereas black bears because of that predatory minority they once they mm -hmm. decide that you're you're gonna they're gonna eat you they're just gonna eat you totally uh, grizzly bears here are on the other hand uh you crack a twig within 300 yards of their cub and they come and kill you so that's that's the fear of our end when you're walking through the woods with grizzlies around here just I always horrific. tell I always tell my wife when we go out if there's risk of a bear or whatever I'm like I'm going to I'm I'm going to shoot everything I've got at that bear except for one. Yeah. Because if it's still coming, <laughs> that one's for me. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You're not getting <laughs> I got to go one. quick. I'm I'm not going to get pulled pork here. Do you I was guys out hunt hunting. bears? No, I don't. Not Anybody else? Yeah, I won't eat them, so I don't hunt them. Yeah, yeah in the same boat, kind of the same way. I'm not I want to. I have a, I, I have a want for a nice bearskin rug, and uh, me too. Ev everything else stops at that point. It's like, yep. it's the same thing. Like if if you can't eat it, or or I'm I'm honestly not that I wouldn't. I'm just too worried of eating it for the yep. stories I've heard. Yeah, Apparently they're delicious. But anyways. Uh, the brain fungus you can get, yeah, uh, no thanks. just just the cool stuff you can get from the eating it. I don't know. I would I would like to have my goal to get a bear would be to get a nice grizzly rug, and that's selfish. So I can't say anything more. Well, um, my that's... my dream is to get a is to get a mule deer tag in Alberta and try to stock a mule deer with my bow because I because we just have a couple mule deer here and. And uh, we, our first mule deer tag was last year in Manitoba. You should get, you should get Matt to take you down to his dad's place for that. You could just throw your bow, and probably get yeah, a mule deer. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, a deer it's... will, a mule deer will run <laughs> out of the truck. Wrap its, <laughs> just yeah. wrap its neck into the cord. Yeah. So Th those were the I, does uh, I was talking about. They're just they're just everywhere, and I'm like, no, no, no. There's some nice. So there's my, some big uh, ones out there, though. My old man lives around the the small town of Milo, Alberta. Where's the, Milo? So Vulcan. Ke okay, I know Vulcan. Vulcan is. Yeah. Okay. Vulcan is uh, 45 minutes southwest of Milo. Uh, anyways, okay. in that entire vicinity, including Vulcan, there are mule deer 
that are thick as thieves. Whitetail are, are relatively rare and mule deer are just literal herds of does will run across you uh -huh. until you're looking for a doe, which we found the last year <laughs> where we found herds <laughs> of bucks. And I mean, herds of bucks. It was, yeah, yeah. it was like, oh, well, there's, there's animals crossing up. this hill. We, we crossed this hill. We're like, oh, we'll line up on one because we're just after a doe. And it's like, yeah. nope, that has antlers. Nope, that has antlers. And it was like, it was a juvenile uh, horde of assholes. That's what it was. It was, yeah, so it was just like all two weird. or three point bucks. It was fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it was juveniles, but uh, I got both my nice mule deer down there. And uh, Darren got his nice mule down there two years ago. That guy. That guy. So there's yeah. your answer, Del. If you want to go stalk a mule deer, yeah. we've got a yeah. place for you. Yeah, we'll go play. I want to do it. I want to do it. You. I want to yep. do it. Are you hunting on your own land? Because you, you have a massive farm. Well, no. I, I am married to a woman whose parents have a massive farm. Ah. Um, I have 80 good. acres equally as good equally as good I I am I we have 80 acres my little piece of land here out the back window is 80 acres of alfalfa right now and it's it's awesome whitetail country got the odd yeah. moose wandering in and never seen an elk on my land but it's just a matter of time uh Delano's They're getting close. late um you've probably got chores oh. And stuff to do in the morning um you but have we do have one to do in the morning I yeah don't. one section uh of our episode we usually do if you have a minute called uh guest to know you and uh Great. we just go through a little bit of like uh trivia questions and stuff if I'm you're into fail. it yeah i'm into it nah you okay. won't all right number one what kind of drink would you be and why so if you were a, a cocktail or a beer, what would you be? I'd be a very expensive whiskey on the rocks. Like uh like right. a Pappy Pappy Van Winkle bourbon on the rocks. Oh. There if I got go. to choose. Yeah. Now the an, second good. answer is that's who I want to be. Who I actually am. <laughs> uh O V. Oh really? O, oh O Vienna. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. I'm so you you're the first guy to answer with like the duality of like what I want, uh, I'm sorry. what what I want to, what I actually am. Oh no, no, that's good. That's Fucking good. awesome! Yeah, I love that's it. The new bar. Mm. But what drink are you really, Darren? Will ask the next next guest. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you got to. That's what life's glass about. Of hot swamp water. <laughs> swamp bar mat. I am bar mat. <laughs> I bar mat. <laughs> bar yeah, That's what I am. What bar I want to uh, be is. That might be the best uh, answer we've got so far on that one. Yeah. Okay, next Thank one. You. Aside from yourself, name one band or artist <laughs> you think is killing it right now in your genre. In my genre, I'm going to go with uh, this girl out of Eastern Oregon. Her name is Margot Silker. Okay. She's Margo she's Silker. she's like doing this. Her songs are amazing. She's she's also like heavy outdoors woman. She is not pretentious whatsoever. Nobody's trying to make her out to be anything other than what she is. She's got a new record coming out. I am telling everyone about her. I have no one's paying me to do it. She's great. Margo Silker. C I L K E R. Yeah. Looking her up right after this. Look it up, man. Uh, You'll love it. I yeah, I'm excited. Okay. Uh what what is a cloaca i have no idea <laughs> let me think about it okay <laughs> cloaca all right so there's your chickens is that is there an actual answer to this question or no mm -hmm. yeah it's an actual answer yeah. i do not know but if i were to surmise I have no idea. No, I have no idea. What is it? <laughs> is Matt? the the vent the vent of a a, a a chicken 
which lays <laughs> the, the cloaca is what the cloaca. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have laying hens. My chickens are for meat. Yeah. So we don't pay uh. attention to the vent. <laughs> 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 but that's a great question. Right. So it's, with it's your chi- uh, it's chicken cooch. <laughs> yeah, chicken <laughs> cooch. <laughs> With your, uh, I'll take what your, I can get. Your massive <laughs> uh, hen population. We thought you might know that. No, I do not know the cloaca. It's a great question. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Use the word chuchin in a sentence. <laughs> um, I don't know how to use the word chuchin. I don't use the word chuchin. I've heard other people use it. How would they use it? Uh, You've heard of the term. I have, but I can't think of what it means, to be honest. See, I told you I'd fail. Uh, uh, I'm hoping that I could make it comedic because I don't know what it means and say... uh, The hired man is chuchin Copenhagen. (laughs) <laughs> you know that's not bad that's, that's actually bad. The, the the proper use of the term yeah. your hired man might need yeah, to but... be fired but it's okay <laughs> what is so tell me what it is yeah no that's basically it just means like it's uh yeah like it's yeah going so it's hot if you have a, a, a roaring fire Pumping. it's the fire's chooching if you choo-choo. have something yeah. just going hard it's chooching if your right. old, but if your be... hired man is is chuchin, if, he let's might say be... you're let's say you're drinking you're drinking beer and then all of a sudden you drink four. Yeah, yeah. you've chuched him. Now you're chuchin. You've chuched. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna start adapting that into my lexicon. It'll be good. I love it. Your lexicon. Um, okay. there's, there's these a ones you should... can tell you that if you start saying chuchin to people, they will <laughs> like you less. That's yeah. what okay. Happens. No more. Yeah. Scott, more. Well, oh, what right. I mean, more. I mean, more. Yeah, I that do. reminds me of the term everyone's using called ju- juge. You hear it? Oh yeah, you got to juge? juge it up. Yeah. Oh, no. Drives me no, nuts. See, this is this is hillbilly. I don't even know this what it means. Uh, chuchin. Uh, chuchin. It is when you say it to somebody, they look at you with cross-eyed, and you explain to them in a manner which we just did to you. You're like, oh, oh yeah. And it's like, yeah, we're we're gonna chew this up. We're gonna get yeah. it going. We're gonna get it. nice. I like it. Uh, get it chewed. These next ones should be easy for you because they're Manitoban terms. Oh boy! By the internet. <laughs> what are right. garbage mitts? Oh, garbage mitts. Yeah, garbage mitts are. There's two styles of garbage mitts. One is black leather. With usually, if they're nice, they're actually like lamb's wool on the inside, and they are the, probably the greatest winter mitt. And they don't—they're short cuffed mitt. Now, there's also a kind yep. with a with a, a, a really, a, a, yeah. There's also a kind with a um, uh, I'm not sure it's cow skin or, or or if it's deer skin, but it's they they come like natural looking now too. But a garbage mitt is the classic Manitoba winter mitt. 40 below, throw them on. You do your chores in those mitts. They're great. Big fan. Everyone should own a pair. Love it. Of now, they always, wear, they always wear out at the fingers. So they're really warm, and then you wear them for a season, and then you wear it through that lamb's wool. Like that, you know that coarse lamb's wool? And then you mm-hmm. end up just hitting the leather. And they're done. Throw them in the fire. And they're done. Throw them in the fire. <laughs> Love it. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Uh, next one. What's Frisnock? I don't know. I don't know. I've heard the term before, but I have no idea what it means. It's not like something to do with like croca curl. Have you heard of croca curl? It's the same. Sort of term. No. No. Fr- Frisnock. You guys. You... Game What's where Frisnock? you you th- you th- yeah. try and knock the beer bottle off a post with a frisbee. Never, never played it. All right. But you've heard a you've heard a croca curl, okay. right? The internet is failing you, Darren. It is failing me. 
Have you heard of Crow? What is that? Okay. No, what Crow is that? Crow. Yeah. Well, that's a Manitoba game. And is it's that another game from? I have not played. Yeah, apparently. Not, it's, is it Crokey Crow or Crokano? No. Crokano is, that's a game. But we're talking yeah. about when, when Crokano gets married with curling. Oh, okay. Yes. Fill us in because this is interesting. Well, I was uh, I was I've, raised on Crokinole. Yeah, I love Crokinole. Now, Crokinole, I was sorry. No, no, no. You're not wrong. There is a big debate between Crokinole and Crokinole, and I grew up in the camp that says Crokinole. And so, if you were in Manitoba and we had a Crokinole board, and you said Crokinole, I would say wake the fuck up. You're wrong. <laughs> oh, this, okay. Yeah. But just because of how I grew up, but you are completely right to call it Crokinole because people yeah. do. But to me, it's Ole. O-L-E. Anyway. Yeah. Cro- Crokey curl is basically, yeah, it's a high, it's, it happens on a sheet of ice, but it's like Crokinole on a sheet of ice with giant pieces. The same way you would... Oh. Yeah, and they've they've oh, been okay. put they've been installing them in small towns and stuff just because it's like a public game. That's It'd awesome. Be like, uh, yeah, it's cool. That's wicked. So anyway, like that, we learned Crokinole. something during trivia. Holy, that's shit. never happened. I don't learn anything. So I know, well, we're not, when I don't, don't have an learn. answer to Friz to Frizznock, I felt yeah. I'm, I like games, and I so I'm upset with myself that I didn't know what that was. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Like, maybe we'll get the next one. What's bumper shine? Oh, I grew up bumper shining. That's that's the only way to get around when you don't have a driver's license. Mm-hmm. So, what happened? Darren's well, so in, yes, you're right. In Manitoba, yeah. they zamboni the they zamboni the roads. So there's no salt. There's no sand. And your friends are getting on the school bus and you want to go with them. So when the school bus pulls away, you grab onto the bumper. Yeah. And you, you just with your boots, you just, you hold onto the bumper until it sucks you underneath the wheel and kills you. Or injures you. <laughs> <laughs> but I still like bumper shine. Bumper, bumper shining is, bumper shining is super fun and you can do it. And like a lot of like the, Grain trucks have handles on the back. Yeah. And like there is a way to just grab onto a grain truck if it's hauling grain away from the yard and just like bring you to the house. So like people just like grab on and it's this what do they call it when uh, kids skateboard? They call it sketching. It's the same idea. It's just like nice. You don't have a rope, you just grab onto a bumper. And I don't know why they called it bumper shining, probably because so many kids hit the bumper and yeah. like took the gravel dust off of it, you know, <laughs> with her Whack. face. Yeah. And I may or may not have been one of those kids, but yeah, like uh, everyone, may or may ev- not like, no, no, straight up. There was announcements over the loudspeaker in my school to not do that. So what does really? everybody and do please, then uh, when they say not please, to? Please don't bumper shine home. Yeah. So as soon as you tell us not to do it, that is the first thing we think that's going to be cool. Yeah. So, yeah. they, and I believe they did that intentionally. They're like, we need, this is a cultural, uh, it's the same as like kids we in Alaska enough, riding icebergs. They're like, we don't have this enough is, money to yeah. keep all these kids in these classrooms anymore. That's we need right. to lose some of them. Get yeah. them out there bumper shining. This is a have not natural. province. You got to make it natural. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. So the last part of this is we're trying it new today. This is a rapid fire. So okay, I'm going to give you two, th- two things, and off the top of your head, you just pick one. Okay, okay. ready? Yep. Cowtown or the Chuck? Cowtown. Yes. Okay. Canola or barley? Barley. Green and yellow or yellow and blue? Green and yellow. Yeah. Green, P- PBR Green or pill? and yellow. Pill. Polaris or Honda? <laughs> Honda. <laughs> no question um, in my mind. 
<laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Built to last. Uh, croissants or sourdough? Sourdough. Oh. All right. White tail or muley? White tail. Trout or pike? <laughs> Trout. All right. I've had enough of pike. All I get is pike around here. <laughs> <laughs> um tyler childers or sturgill simpson oh that's really really interesting i'll take childers okay dolly or kenny dolly willie or cash that that song is a, that that question is offensive <laughs> um <laughs> This one is fair. I take Willie, but but only by hair. Okay, and the last one, because I know you've it's you've you've worked with one, and I think you're going on tour with the other, Coulter or Corb. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's just mean. We're gonna that's edit mean. this one out. <laughs> he doesn't vet these with us. This is the first we've oh. ever heard of it. We're sorry, Dom. This you is actually this. No, this is a great question. Now, what is the, what do you look at the debate? You can see it in his eyes. Oh, so I I just I finished the tour with Coulter. Yeah, and I've done a lot of tours with Corp. Yeah, and I'm fans. I'm fans of both of them. Yeah, you and should I'm happy be. To, They're I'm, both awesome. I'm happy. I'm happy to report to everybody who listens that I suspected them both to be assholes and they were both just absolutely killer dudes. Oh, yeah, isn't that nice? Awesome. Well, yeah, you don't you, actually I go have to in pick thinking one. like I go in as especially as an opener, like I need to stay out of their way. They're there to do a job. It's not about me. Just try to help out. You know, mm-hmm. you, this is a great opportunity. And they were both welcoming, uh, hilarious, fun to be around. They had all the time in the world for me. And the only reason, because I have to answer your question. I'm not no, going to do that. You don't, you don't, you don't actually. No, I'm going to answer it. Just call, say, Darren Northcott's a douche. That's the <laughs> well, that might that might be another question. Uh, <laughs> That's a statement. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with Corb, just because he is he's paid his dues times a hundred, and he Fair. keeps doing yep. it. And I think they're both incredible artists and. Um, I got to go with the Albertan, and and uh, and I hope right. Coulter never hears this because I'm a huge fan, and uh, more and more every day. <laughs> but if you ask me this question in ten years, Coulter would have caught up to to Corb's amount of experience, you know, Correct. and maybe my yeah. answer would be different. And I hope that I hope that the way I answer that question is that I think Coulter would agree. And Coulter is more famous than Corb maybe ever will be now. Yeah. In some ways. Hey. Yeah. Totally. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, he, dude is huge. Like those shows were insane. So I'm going to give it to Corb just because I feel like you, uh, I don't want to call Corb an elder, but dude's been at it forever <laughs> and, uh, well, deserves respect deserve yeah yeah that's fair yeah you crushed it you killed it what do you, you win a shirt what fucking Frisnock Frisnock is dude your shirts look awesome i spent the guy in the lot i sp- i spent like 15 minutes on looking at your shirts today they look so good you might be the per- the the only person who spent that long on that website <laughs> well i like a good t-shirt <laughs> Well, let us know which one you want. We'll send it to you. I will. Yeah. Is it no problem? Is it blue, green, or red? Uh-huh. <laughs> I like. I like the I like the Buck Fever one a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a yeah. Good. Ain't, ain't that yeah. the truth, eh? 
Dude, I know that truth very well. A lot of empty casings and a lot of a lot of deer running around still healthy. <laughs> hey, I have been I've been I've come I've fallen victim to mis, I've been Mr. Mag Dump. Don't don't judge me. So my uh my last year we were shooting fucking goddamn deer. And I mean like goddamn deer. We were shooting does and anyone would have taken I shot so many brass hit the ground. I didn't hit anything. I'm like, ah, I must have bumped my gun. I borrowed Darren's gun. I shot so many brass. They hit the ground. Nothing else did. It was, it was, oh man, it was, it was to the point. So my, our comments before where there was just mule deer running everywhere and mule bow, mule does running everywhere. I couldn't hit anything. So I like, well, obviously my gun's broken. So I took it out to the range, shot it. It was within a two inch group. It was yeah. all me. I was fucking awful. It was, it was so <laughs> humbling. Two yeah. guns, zero deer, all the, all the brass, all the brass. I love it. So then I love it. Darren's wife. Everyone needs to do that. And there's brass tumbling out of the fucking door. And he points to me. It's like, no, it was Matt. It was Matt. (sighs) Yeah. That was pretty funny. Like what's with all the empty bullets. I'm like, Matt, she's like, Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Can't hit anything. Totally. Can't hit a damn thing. Um, So yeah, that's the reason that shit exists. I love that. Um, Dell, I want to say, I know we're, we're getting late now. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Um, it's all good. I want to say thank you for coming on. Um, this has been a blast. Uh, Almanac is your new album. It's out now yep. wherever you can buy or stream music. Do you have a tour coming up? I know you just did one. Is there another one on the horizon? Uh, yeah, I'm heading to Montana, uh, Colorado, and Texas. Just five or six shows, super quick, and then festival season starts. Just keeping on here, and just doing a little bit here and there. But perfect. Mostly, I'm going to focus focus my time on being home over the summer. Just do my thing here. Yeah, awesome. love it. We will. Uh, Thanks for having me on. It's a we'll pleasure to be on, on your show. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, honestly, really enjoyed hanging out with you guys. Thanks for making the time for me. Oh, likewise. Thanks for, Thanks for making the time for us. Thank you. Um, no. Yeah. Send us uh, send us the shirt you want and what size, and we'll ship it over to you. Will do. Awesome. Thanks, Del. Have a, okay. have a great night, and uh, enjoy your, your farm chores tomorrow. Thanks, All right. Del. Have a great night. Have a great night. Yeah, take care. Okay, bye. Um, yeah. That was great. Uh, they went like full hunting real quick. I didn't expect that. I thought we were going to go full yeah. farming. It was full hunting. I loved it. I thought the same thing. He's, yeah, he's, he's as serious a hunter as our last guest. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was uh, unexpected, but it was awesome. Five in a row with a bow. First day yeah. out. Yeah, last four years or whatever, first, unreal. Good for him. Velvets, and perfect. The velvet that he showed on the camera there was immaculate. It was so perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, jealousy strikes. Yeah. Well, we can all go be jealous now. Well, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> of the deer we don't have and the um, 2,000 acres we don't have and the chickens we don't have and the yeah. talent we don't have. And the talent we don't have. Yeah. <laughs> so he, uh, he, he owns 80. He rents or not rents, sorry. Uh, he's part of a family who has many, many thousands of acres. Mm-hmm. How many thousands of acres do you have, Darren? Thousands? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. 
Let's not none, do math. None. Like point one, it would be. Point, no, yeah, point, point, point one thousand. Yeah. If, if no, you round even. up, if you put enough zeros to it, I own point zero of an acre as well. So. <laughs> point zero. <laughs> yeah. No, that was great. Um, and I guess now we just uh, go get to be envious of them. So the only thing left to do, Matt, is keep on choosing. Keep on choosing. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, nobody. Don't forget to check out mutteringpines.com for our line of apparel and follow us on social and anywhere you listen to or watch your favorite podcasts. And remember, keep on choochin'.